Mark, welcome to my home. This is part two of my tab trailer Aldi corrosion experiment. If you haven't seen part one, I recommend that you do that um, so you know what's going on here. But in a nutshell, um, in working through my Aldi system, I put additional drains on there um, to help with the draining cycle and uh, ran across an idea of putting a sacrificial anode rod in the Aldi system um, like your regular water heaters would have. The Aldi system doesn't come with one naturally and I thought that um, the uh, this heater could, this hydronic heater could probably benefit from having one also for the same reason. Again, if you haven't seen part one, go back and look at it before, before reading that. But um, my anode rod uh, came today in the mail. This is uh, magnesium. It's a half inch in diameter. It's about nine inches long. Um, I was looking for one about seven inches, but no big deal. I'm just going to cut a few inches off the back of that, off the bottom of it when I need to, when I figure out how long it needs to be. But we are going to immerse this, this rod down into the reservoir um, and hook a ground, wa ground wire on the top of it um, and hook it down to ground. Um, that should help with galvanic um, corrosion that's going on inside the Aldi radiator system. Um, there's three kinds of corrosion that occur in these systems. There's acidic, uh, there's galvanic, and there's electrolytic. This rod takes care, just like it does in your regular hot water system in your house, in your hot water tank, this takes care of the galvanic type corrosion that's going on. So here's my new rod. You recognize this. This is the original cap. Um, it came with a with just a rubber insert like this, and it screws down on top. So um, I saved the original um, rubber uh, cap part so that I can go back when I need to. This is the new one that I cut. Um, it's flimsy, and so this won't um, won't support it. So I also cut um, looks the same, but it's a piece of uh, about eighth inch thick plastic. And what I'll do is put that plastic in the top, and that makes this um, quite hard. So that when I slip this down through there, it will give this guy some support. Um, so I'm going to next. I'm going to drill a half inch hole through that. Um, slip this through there. Here's a nut that I have that will slip on the underside. This is plastic, so it won't corrode in anything. And we will just pinch that on just like that. On the top of this, I'm going to, this is a piece, this is steel, this little weld spot that they put on there. I'm going to clean that up a little bit, and I'm going to solder on a wire, and that'll clip down to my Aldi. So I'm going to go drill that. I'll be right back back here's the hole drilled in the support plastic the rubber washer behind it the anode rod will slip into that hole the whole thing gets assembled like so a good tight fit here like that line that all up here's my uh, support nut thing fits like that and then 
into the cap. And there we go. I will hook wire to the end of that, cut this to length that I need, and screw it down on my on the reservoir. See you in a bit. Okay, here we go. I have cut the uh, piece of the anode rod to length so it'll just clear the bottom of the reservoir tank. This is the extra piece I cut off that was like nine inches. Got to give you a bit of heads up if you decide to do this yourself and you cut magnesium, go slow. Don't make any sparks. If you ignite this stuff, it can burn and once it starts on fire, it's really hard to put out. It'll. <laughs> um, those of you that have any metallurgy experience will understand what I'm saying, but cut this with a hacksaw and cut it very slowly. Don't make any sparks, don't ignite it. But nonetheless, here is my anode rod. I have soldered a uh, connection to the top of that. So that'll give me a good ground to the Aldi itself. So we'll go ahead and assemble um, and I'll show you what it looks like. Alrighty, so there's my completed assembly. I'll drop that down into the uh, reservoir and, we sh and connect the other end of the line to the ground on the Aldi. We should be good to go. Let's head out to the trailer and get it set up. Here's my final assembly. We'll take this cap. There's the Aldi reservoir. Drop the anode down in. Nice and tight. There's the ground rod wire running down. I have it routed down in here. Here's the other end of that wire. And we'll connect that to the ground of the Audi. But the first thing I need to do is I need to run a test. If that anode rod is working right, I should be able to take my fluke meter. I should be able to take my fluke meter and measure a current. A small current between this the end of this ground wire and the Aldi ground circuit. So let me get that on right now. We'll check it out. See if it's working. Excellent. Check that out. Between that ground wire that runs out there, I had to use my other meter because the other one had a bad battery, but look at that. 0.22 amps. Um, 200 milliamps, 220 milliamps between the case and that ground wire. So he is definitely, he's working. Um, so that, that uh, uh, anode rod in there will protect my Aldi circuit and my Aldi um, systems here by sacrificing itself. And because I see a galvanic reaction going on, uh, 0.22 amps, um, I'm good to go. See what kind of voltage that generates. Look at that, right on the money. About a volt. That's about what you're looking for. That's the uh, galvanic difference between magnesium and aluminum is about a volt. So excellent. I'm done here. Um, we'll let this go for a few months. I will pull that uh, uh, anode out and I should see some starting of some corrosion on there. Excellent. Anyway, thanks for tagging along with this experiment. I'll keep you guys all informed about how it goes, and I'll see you on the road. Bye-bye.